Upon returning to the Kitty Hawk, Shepard made a more serious speech, asking for world peace in light of the continuing conflict in Vietnam. None of the networks carried the transmission. It was an indication of the growing indifference with which the American people viewed their space program. It was no longer novel. That would change briefly with Apollo 15 and the introduction of the lunar rover. David Scott, who had flown on Apollo 9 and had been Neil Armstrong's partner during Gemini 8, commanded the spacecraft's Endeavour and Falcon. Jim Irwin handled the chores of Lunar Module Pilot, and Al Worden was the Command Module Pilot. Their liftoff came two years and ten days after Apollo 11. Uh, the mission commander on my flight was Dave Scott. He'd been on Apollo 9 before, and so he'd been up in one of these things prior to our flight, and as we accelerated out on the first stage, of course, we burned out fuel. Uh, the thrust-to-weight ratio started changing drastically, and we started to accelerate. And we accelerated out to about, I don't know, four, four and a half Gs, whatever it was. And then the main engine shut down. Well, there's a little retro rocket on the first stage that fires just before those main engines shut down. When the main engines shut down, those retro rockets are, are trying to pull the first stage away from the rest of it, but they're still hooked up. So you go from four and a half G's one way to about a half a G the other way, and I remember us elbows and everything into the instrument panel trying to save everything, and Jim Irwin and I being sitting there saying, God, we sure didn't expect this to happen because that's something you can't do in simulation. Looking over at Dave, and Dave said, yeah, geez, I forgot to tell you guys about that. Modifications of the lunar module greatly extended the time that could be spent on the moon. The astronauts' spacesuits were also updated. These improvements, along with the new lunar roving vehicle, allowed for extra EVA. The rover, folded and stored in the lower part of the lunar module, was an electric four-wheel drive car that allowed the astronauts to travel an area ten times that of the previous mission. The vehicle had a top speed of seven miles per hour and a battery capable of holding a charge for 55 miles of use. Scott and Irwin traveled 17 miles and gathered 170 pounds of samples, including the so-called Genesis Rock, one of the oldest rocks brought back. Like Shepard, Scott put on a demonstration for the earthbound audience. His presentation was of a more scientific nature, however. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here, and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? So Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. Even after returning to Endeavour, the crew continued to break new ground. They launched the first satellite from a manned spacecraft, and Al Worden became the first person to perform EVA in deep space. His spacewalk lasted 38 minutes as he retrieved film from cameras located outside the spacecraft. The mission ended on August 7, 1971. The splashdown was rougher than normal due to a failed parachute, but the crew was in high spirits as they wouldn't be entering quarantine as the other astronauts had. It was time for John Young to get his chance. Young had remained in the command module during Apollo 10 while Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan circled the moon. Now as commander of Apollo 16, he...